Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at a card game called Stones of Fate. Ooh, Stones of Fate. In this one, you're going to be trying to control specific cards on the table when they get flipped up and basically score them for the most victory points. I do want to mention that in the game there are some cards that, as the rule book here says, uh, contain artistic depictions of nudity. They can be removed without affecting gameplay. I'm reading that from the rule book here. And that's true, they have about six or seven or eight cards that have, like they say, uh, drawn nudity. And so you can remove those without it affecting gameplay or leave them in. I just want to make you aware of that um, before I get to the overview. So, is the game any good? Let's find out. The objective of Stones of Fate is to get the most victory points, and you're going to be doing that by controlling these cards and scoring them. To set up the game, you're going to give each player five of these Fate Stones, conveniently made of glass. You're going to lay out this pattern of nine cards, and then you're going to shuffle up eight cards per player and set aside a deck. Once that runs out, that's pretty much the end of the game. On your turn, you're going to be taking two actions out of a three three different possible actions, you could even take the same one twice. The actions are, you can take a look at a card, you grab one, take a look at it, put it back. Second action is you can move one of your stones. You can put it anywhere in the pattern here, next to a card. So it could be even on the outside, or it could be between any two cards, however you want to do it. You can also move one of these from already the pattern here to somewhere else. So you could do that. The third action you can do is you can actually flip a card over and basically score it. See who gets it. See what happens. And so on my turn, let's say I could take a look at this one and then play a stone there. This player could play a stone here and then play a stone here. This player could play, could take a look at one and then play a stone here and so on. When it's back to my turn, for example, I would probably reveal this because I would be able to score it now. How do I know that? Well, the symbols on the outside here tells me what happens, so let's take a look at those. Right here are the four possible symbols. Power zones, you basically count up how many stones there are in all those zones, and whoever has the most is the winner. Keystones here require very specific amounts of stones, so for example, this card has nothing on all three sides here, but two up here. If you have exactly two at the top, you win this card. It's worth two victory points. This one's a forbidden zone. There cannot be anything in that zone, or you cannot win. And this opportunity zone basically says that each player with a stone in that zone may draw a card and add it to their collection, a card from there. And so that's basically it. Every card has some symbols on the sides, a number of victory points, and some have a couple of different effects. That symbol there means when you win it, each player may discard one card from their collection. And this one is when you flip it. It says you may move one fate stone belonging to any player. So in this case, for example, four victory points, you need two here and two here, and whoever flips it gets that power even if they're not the one who wins it. So that's it. So we're back to our example here. This is all like this. This player flipped, they win this. I take that, put it in my score pile, and then I replenish that spot from the deck, and I keep going. Then my second action, for example, this turn could be to take a look at this one. All right, now be aware the game is very specific that when you flip these cards, they have to be flipped like this. So I know that when it's flipped, this is going to be on this side, even though it was on, on the outside while it's face down, obviously. And so I would do that. That's my second action. Let's say I looked at that, and now I know what's there. I know if I wanted to win that, I would need two here and two here. And this is the, uh, the opportunity zone which would also be pretty good, so I might leave that stone there. And so that's how the game works. 
People keep playing, keep flipping. That one doesn't go to anybody. As you can see, you needed to have stones here. This one's actually a negative card. So that's one you want to avoid or hopefully get rid of or hopefully pass on to someone else. There's all sorts of powers like that that let you mess with what people are holding. But you keep doing that until those are gone. Once the deck is completely gone, we're going to play one more round. Then everything gets revealed, everything gets divvied out, and the highest score is the winner of Stones of Fate. As you can see from that overview, the game's pretty straightforward. It's a very simple game. It's got some card effects, but they're typically very uh, simplistic. Take a card from someone, give a card to someone, that sort of thing. Uh, and mechanically, while it works well, it's a little... It's, it's a little boring. The game's not very engaging. I think the artwork is not very interesting. Not the nudity thing, I don't care about that, but the artwork itself, the, the, the style is not um, charming to me. I don't find it attractive. But, you know, obviously you might. That's, that's, you, you can just see that. You can make up your own mind right away about that. The game play itself is okay. It's not broken. I do like that. Um... When I say that, it's not broken. I mean, a lot of games coming out lately, especially Kickstarter games, find a way to dig themselves into holes with card powers and such. This game finds a way right around that. It's it's a game that zips along. It moves well. It's, it's speedy. It doesn't clutch up at any given moment. But ultimately, it's also not very engaging. I did not find it to be particularly fun. You just sort of sit there and go, hmm, let me look at this. Oh, okay. I'll put a stone here. Next time it comes around, I'll reveal it. Hey, look, I won that. Now I get to give you a card. Here's my worst card. It, it, it's not, um, you know, it doesn't quite zip and, and uh, excite you. But that's that's what it is. It's also not a terrible game. It's somewhere in the middle of the pack for me. And so, Stones of Fate, while I don't uh, give it a rousing thumbs up, I also think it's an okay game. And maybe if you like the style of play... Maybe you like the artwork, you could uh, look into it. For me, it's sort of a lukewarm, check it out, or maybe pass on it if you don't like luck in your games. But um, that's why the video's there, so you can make up your own mind. Stones of Fate. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.